Thank you for joining us today for some questions about college answered from our amazing panelists and student leaders. We would like to take a moment as we get started to say congratulations to the FSU class of 2024. Getting accepted and choosing to come to Florida State University is a day to always celebrate. We could not be more excited for you to join the Seminole family. Today, our panel of student leaders are here to answer some of your questions about Florida State and their experiences so far. Our moderator for the afternoon will be Irene Dominique, a junior here at Florida State from Orlando, Florida, double majoring in marketing and editing, writing and media. Irene is an ambassador for the Student Alumni Association and is also involved in the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, Lady Spirit Hunters, and Ad Club. Please welcome Irene. Thank you, Kenneth, and welcome panelists. Um, before we get started, you'll notice that you can submit questions um, in the question box down below. Um, so feel free to ask any questions um, there, um, and we will try our best to answer them. Um, and I'd like to start with our panelist, Jonathan. And panelists, um, uh, please give everybody a background of who you are, um, your position on campus, um, and any other thing that you feel is important for um, the participants to know. Okay, well, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan Levin. I serve as a student body president for Florida State University. A um, little background on me, I am from South Florida, graduated from Pompano Beach High School. Um, I'm going into my senior year. I study international affairs. Um, and then my involvements on campus, I am also an Air Force ROTC cadet. So as soon as I graduate uh, from college, I will go straight to flight school um, to hopefully be an Air Force pilot. And um, other areas of involvement, I was previously a student senator, uh, director of NOLPAC, and I'm a proud brother of Pi Kappa Alpha. Um, so I am proud to be here today, and thanks for having me. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, and our next panelist for the um, evening is going to be Christian. All right, thank you for that. Like she said, my name is Christian Hall. I currently serve as a student body treasurer at Florida State University. A little bit about me, I'm actually from born and raised in Tallahassee, Florida, so I kind of always wanted to be a Seminole. Um, I'm a rising senior studying finance and management information systems with involvement in a wide array of areas, Black Student Union, Invest in All, um, and I'm a brother of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. I'm happy to be here and answer some questions for you guys. Thank you, Christian. Um, our next panelist for the night is going to be Jose Pettifrere. I hope I said it right. <laughs> um, it's actually Jose Petit Frere. It's fine. Um, okay. It's a lot of people make that mistakes. But um, <laughs> hello, everybody. My name is Jose Petit Frere. I'm a fourth year real estate and finance major at the prestigious Florida State University. Um, I'm the president of the National Panhellenic Council here at Florida State University, and I'm also a brother of the Mighty Mu Epsilon chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I graduated from Palm Beach Lakes High School um, in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I'm here at FSU. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next panelist for the um, evening is going to be Jenna. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Laval. I am a rising senior and I currently serve as the 2020 Panhellenic Association President here at FSU. Um, I am also from South Florida. I graduated from Cypress Bay High School. Um, I am a dual degree student with d majors in Media Communication Studies and Criminology and I'm also really excited to be here. Thank you, Jenna. Um, our next panelist is going to be Kevin. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin Rutois. I'm a rising senior as well from South Florida. Uh, I attended the Sagemont School in high school. Um, I'm a double major in finance and real estate uh, and the Interfraternity Council President. I'm also a proud brother of Sigma Phi Epsilon. Thank you, Kevin. Um, and our last panelist for the night is going to be our very own Kenneth. Um, so I'm going to jump into it. Once again, thank you panelists for being here today. We are so excited to hear from each of you. Um, so let's start with our first question for the night, which is going to be, how do you balance academics, extracurricular activities, and socializing? So you guys can kind of figure out, like, how do you want to answer it? Um, so go ahead. I can go. I guess I'll start off. Um, <laughs> one thing that I do to balance my schedule because I'm involved in a lot on campus is to just keep like a calendar of events. Like I literally have a calendar of like when I have certain events and like what time they are in. 
So I really use that to help me. I guess I'll just go ahead after. Um, something that I actually uh, do when it comes to balancing my time, especially with a lot of extracurricular activities, I use something called the Passion Planner. And I can go ahead and show you guys it right here. Um, it, uses, it, it actually measures my time down to 30 minute increments. So I can plan my times effectively, um, especially when it comes to the days, the weeks, and also the months. And it also has little fun things in there that you can go ahead and kind of write down or like, what are your highlights in the day? And also gives you like quotes and stuff. Um, but also I use that. And then also I use a to-do list. Um, and then from my to-do list, I kind of measure everything in like four sections. Um, the first being, uh, it has to be like the important and urgent things. Those are like the top things that I get done. Then second is the urgent, but not important. And then from there, it goes from uh, urgent, I mean, not urgent, but it's important, and then not urgent and not important. So I kind of uh, set my to-do list in certain categories to kind of measure which ones that I want to prioritize first things on my list. So that's what I do. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest aspects of it also, something that I constantly am working with, is you want to make sure you're setting up your priorities for that time being. So if you're going to be focusing on school, focus on school, you know, put away all those distractions, your phone, stuff like that. I um, mean, really like grind it out so that you can have a social life or, you know, be able to do whatever you want in the evening um, or anything like that. Right. So like if you're regimenting your time for a specific thing, whether for me, it'd be like, you know, sending emails because a large part of the student body president role, but, or if it's, you know, just doing homework, regimenting my time and following that and not getting distracted by anything else, but it truly takes discipline, especially in a college environment. So Definitely. Yeah, and I'll go next. I would say the best thing um, that I use to manage my time is just my phone. I use the, the calendar app that I have and I just literally plan my day out hour by hour because time management is definitely a skill like anything else you have to learn and it comes with the learning process. So just throughout my time in college, I've gotten better with it, but li literally knowing what you're going to do in each hour of the day kind of helps me stay on track, helps me stay focused. Like I know I need to be doing this at this time. I need to go to this event at this time. And um, if you have that in your mind and you're getting reminders on your phone, it helps you stay um, accountable for everything that you have going on. So that's just what I use. <laughs> you can go, Jenna. Go I was just going to echo what everyone was saying about, um, like, I think that it takes time your freshman year to kind of find out what system works for you. So that would be my rec. Like, I really liked freshman year, the passion planner. But as I went on, I like, I'm someone who once I write it, it has to be concrete. And as we've seen with this past year, that's just not the case of anything. Um, yeah. So I think just kind of spend the time and figure out what works for you and then figure out how you can adapt that best to your schedule. Um, because I think I've switched a lot of my scheduling and calendars over the years. But once you find one that works for you, it's really beneficial. So I would just say, spend your time trying to figure that out. I agree. And add on, um, obviously having a calendar and set hour to hour planning is really important. But one thing that I kind of wanted to reiterate is when it's time for academics, it's time for academics. I know at least personally for me, my phone is going off all times of the day, but when you have to study, you have to study. So I feel like the most important thing is, um, I know a lot of students like to go to Strozier and kind of sit with their friends, but when it's time to study, it's good to go focus, sit alone, put your phone away, like put it on silent, turn it screen down, put it away and just focus. Cause then once you're kind of like in that zone to study, you'll be a lot more efficient and you won't have to spend, you know, six hours at Strozier studying three chapters. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's something that to add on to what everyone's saying, everyone said, you know, great points, but I think that's something that is super important in my opinion. <clears throat> okay. So thank you so much for that. Um, our next question is going to be, how did you choose your major at FSU? So I can, I can start with that really quick because I've, I've changed my major probably like four different times, to be completely honest. Um, I came freshman year, uh, exploratory, then I changed to marketing, then I changed to business management, then I changed to economics, and then I, now I'm finance and real estate. Um, I think, so the reason I chose finance and real estate, real estate has been something that I've been interested in my whole life um, with my internships and just always looking um, around my community and just like thinking like how development works. That's something that I've always been interested in. Um, and then finance is kind of basically the language of business and it teaches you the overall just business world. Um, so I think that's why 
that's why I decided to double major. Um, it's been tough, you know, it's a lot double majoring and then being involved as well. But that's when, you know, that whole balancing comes in and learning how to time manage. Like Christian said, it is a skill, but once you've mastered it, uh, it's definitely possible. I'll jump in. So um, actually my freshman year in high school, I think a lot of students took like AP human geography. And because of that AP course um, that like touched on a bunch of different areas of history combined with politics, combined with geography, social issues, stuff like that. Um, so when I found out that international affairs um, only has one required class, which a lot of people still don't know about, and then you're able to choose the rest of your electives that have to do with international affairs, um, I immediately fell in love with that because I was able to take um, classes based off of intro to terrorism compared to like Middle Eastern religions, compared to, you know, social economic um, topics in you know asia right and so those are all different areas that i've been able to kind of learn about um and i love it because it's always just something new and exciting um and i'm also not too stressed because i'm in class i'm actually enjoying it so and going into the military afterwards it's probably something that i'm going to be able to have to use um when i'm traveling around so i love the major and i'm super grateful so I'll hop in next. Um, in high school, I actually wanted to be an engineering major. Uh, that quickly changed when I realized I was going to have to take Calc 3. Um, so <laughs> once I got to FSU, um, I knew I wanted to do something in the business room because I do want to one day open my own real estate investment trust. But I didn't want to just major in real estate because I wanted to like get kind of some experience before going down that route. So I majored in finance because like Kevin said, it is the, the language of business that helps you understand so many things about business. Um, and just how like my money works, um, how can you fund things. So I majored in finance and then I added on the MIS major because it, it goes kind of hand in hand with finance because the way the, the financial industry is moving um, in this day and age, like everything is so um, involved with technology and my, uh, management information systems is kind of like the technology side of finance, if you will, a lot of um, like data analytics and this um, machine learning, things of that nature. So they kind of go hand in hand, especially with the career path that I want to go down. I can quit. I'm um, media communications is one of my majors. Um, and I specifically, so if anyone is interested in that, um, like the communication school at FSU, um, I didn't know which exactly specialty I wanted to do yet, whether it was public relations or um, digital media production. Like I really was interested in all of those. So to me, that just seemed like a good broad way to do it because you're able to still take classes in all of those um, concentrations without having to only be able to take classes in that concentration. So if anyone is interested in the communication school, highly recommend. I guess I can go. Um, I'm actually the same major as Kevin, real estate and finance. But um, I actually started off my freshman year as an entrepreneurship major because I did want to open my own brokerage uh, when I got older. But then I found out that that, that wasn't uh, the place that I wanted to stay. I actually wanted to go ahead and focus on uh, real estate primarily. And then I added finance later. But really what brought me into it was um, just growing up, uh, like living in a, uh, a single uh, household where it was just my mom. So I got to see her work really hard, um, uh, raise up some money to actually buy a house and then rent it out from there and become a landlord so I would go ahead and help her fix the house and things like that and I seen how like her how basically how things change from there and um that's what really got me into real estate I was really kind of um into real estate and then that's when I got to see more about it while I was in the major and I noticed that I like to see places where people kind of live play and work so those were kind of things that I can um that I really like about it. And I feel like real estate is also a lucrative business as well, because I feel like people will always need places to live. People will always need places for entertainment and people will always need places to work. Um, I guess I'll go next. Um, so I'm a real estate and finance major too. There's something about that major that's just, <laughs> that's just exciting <laughs> apparently. Um, but I was in finance and real estate my junior year. When I came in as a freshman, I was actually a computer science major. And when I was a computer science major, I took one programming class and I realized computer science is not for me. So I had to really go soul search in my sophomore year, what do I want to do in life? And then somehow I found my way to finance and real estate. 
um, just mainly the finance aspect because um, I really did want to work in like a bank. And that was just something that like after doing my own soil searching and talking to my mentors, they're like, oh, you do really well in business and finance. And then I rolled with it. And I haven't regretted it since. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, so we actually have a question from one of our one of our participants. Um, and the question is, what makes Tallahassee, in your opinion, different from other college towns? And with that, I want to add, um, have you ever gotten homesick? So when we think about like the aspect of moving away from home to college, have you ever gotten homesick? Um, and if so, um, what did you do to combat that sickness? I'll start off with this one. Um, I'll, I'll answer the first question first. So like one of the biggest things that makes Tallahassee different is that not only do we have FSU, right? We also have FAMU and TCC, two top institutions in the country. FAMU is the number one public HBCU. TCC is the number one uh, community college in the country. And we just have so many smart students in this city and we collaborate together on so many different events and just um, even outside of like academic events you know we have like concerts and stuff and it's just cool to see like a town where so many students can come together have a good time and at the end of the day we're all here going to college trying to propel our lives forward and it's just a, a really awesome experience um and to answer the question about getting homesick not really like i said before i'm from tallahassee so i can go like 10 minutes and see my parents so that's all i have i can go um oh go ahead you can go kind of oh um so the answer to the first question so like when i was doing my college tours back when i was like looking at various schools i went on a lot of college tours and one thing that makes tallahassee unique is like it's really like beautiful like the campus of florida state like is really nice and like where you live and just like living there is just like a different experience and then also um the question of homesick i'm from out of state um, I'm from Chicago, so really just um, coming to Florida State, I really felt like I found my family, and that was really something that <clears throat> really made Florida State special for me because I felt like it was a home outside of home. Um, so for the first question, I think everyone else described it better than I ever could. I don't know what it is about Tallahassee, but I truly if you've talked to me you know I'm like its biggest fan um but for the homesick aspect of the question um I'm from South Florida so I it was not too bad for me to drive home in freshman year I did go home a lot because I just I don't know if I like wasn't just like I just didn't adjust right away um or like I just the first year I was a little homesick um but I think as time went on and as the years went on like this past year I don't I went home for holidays and that was it and I didn't want to leave um, so I think just as you get more accustomed to FSU and as you meet more people and at, you get more acclimated to campus, you do, it just because you, you're more, you want to stay and you don't want to, you're not as homesick and it's just, and of course, like you want to go home and see your family. So for breaks and everything. Um, but um, I think just as time goes on, you really feel the connection that all of us do. And like, all, you can ask any person on this panel, everyone loves FSU, doesn't want to graduate in a year. Um, so I think that just comes with time. Yeah, I agree. One thing that is just really unique about Tallahassee is like what Christian said, that it's like the heart of this city are the three universities or the three schools that are in Tallahassee. And it's just a different, you could just feel it when you're on campus. I don't know if it's just me, but I just, I don't know. I just love it here. It's like a second home. Um, I'm not even supposed to be here in the summer and I just came up because I just I just won't go like for jogs around campus. Like, I just love the school and I love the city. Um, it just feels like a second home. Uh, now homesick, that's a good question. So freshman year, there were times where I got homesick, but I'm from Fort Lauderdale area and I was actually, I'm actually the opposite of Jenna. So I am not a really big, you know, driver. I don't like driving for long periods of times. Uh, so I kind of, thought to myself before actually going on a trip was like, oh, is it worth driving eight hours and spending $80 on gas to go home? And that was really enough for me to be like, okay, like, no, it's not worth it. Like stay here. So that was my thing freshman year. I didn't go home as much. Um, but now I just go home, you know, for, for holidays and stuff as well. So. Yeah. And I think uh, what a lot of people don't realize is how close we are to Georgia. I mean, I really didn't even realize that. So even if you're a big nature person or even if you're not right, 
Providence Canyons is in here, but it, there's a ton of like different outdoor places. There's, you know, so many things, even just like in a five mile radius of FSU that I think students really don't like find out about until after freshman or sophomore year. Um, and I even know for myself, freshman year, I was like, oh, I love Florida State. I hate Tallahassee. Like it's, you know, like, being real with people like Tallahassee, like it has all these different names to it and stuff like that. Um, but now as like going into a senior, like I love Tallahassee, I love FSU, because um, there's a lot more to it than just FSU, but you find that out. And I, exactly what Jen was saying about like, as time goes on, you truly uh, find a love for the people in the, in the community. Um, and then the homesick, I think everybody has a time where they get homesick or like, ah, like what am I doing here? You know, miss my parents, miss the norm. And I think it just takes time for you to realize, like, why are you up here? You know, you're, you're here to get an education, but you're also here to grow as an individual. Um, and it's okay to go home to family, but just know that um, if it comes to that, like, time, rely on those people who are around you to kind of push yourself forward because they're probably feeling the exact same thing. Definitely. Um, so I know that we have a lot of um, great panelists here. Um, all of you are involved in some capacity on campus. Um, and the question is, how, um, as a freshman, do you get involved? I can go ahead and do that. So I say the first thing um, that I, I say I got involved is just by um, talking to people, you know? Um, I feel like a lot of people, um, like, are very kind of friendly in a way. They're they're open. So I don't think really anybody would kind of like reject you and say, hey, get away from me. But just talking to people is one of the best things that I found to go ahead and get involved. And also trying out the, um, what is it, the involvement fair that they have at Florida State University. Um, the involvement fair hosts a plethora of different organizations um, and also some programs that are there. So if you actually go ahead and, and you go to the involvement fair, you can see almost about over 500 organizations that Florida State kind of hosts. Yeah, so FSU is really good about having uh, RSOs, which are regular uh, registered student organizations. Um, they have, for whatever you're interested in, there's something there for you to join. So I'd recommend joining something that you're interested in, but also going out of your comfort zone and joining something that, you know, you may have a little bit of interest in, but you're not sure about it. I would say go for it. Um, College is all about experiencing new things and learning more about yourself, just like Jonathan said, and you grow as a person. So kind of getting out of your comfort zone will help a lot. So if that means outside of just getting involved, also, you know, if you're staying in the dorm, just going around and seeing those students and saying what's up, like actually networking and talking to people because everyone in that dorm is in the same boat as you. Um, so if you go and like everyone's going to be nice and try to make friends and just meet new people. So I think that's really important. Uh, and then also I sports is a good way to uh, kind of stay safe and also get involved in the same time. Um, that's what I would say. Um, I want to kind of add on to what he said. Um, I think another thing is that it's unique about FSU is that we actually have like a website that lists um, every organization on this campus. Um, and with that, that the, the contact information for that organization is made available. So even if you're not the type of person that's very friendly um, and can easily walk up to a person and say hi, you can just send an email or even follow the um, social media site for that organization and maybe send in a direct message, whether it be Instagram or Facebook, and asking them how exactly do I get involved. Yeah, and that's the number one best advice that I got as a freshman was like, go on Facebook, go on Twitter, go on Instagram and follow those pages. And from there, you'll get firsthand finding out when those events are. If you do that to every single org, if you don't like it or you think, oh, it's not for me, just unfollow them, right? But at that time, you can see every single event that they're going to be having. Right. And then also, oh, right. go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say there's literally over 800 registered student organizations on this campus. So literally whatever you are interested in, whatever your passion is, there's a group for you. And like Kevin said, you should definitely try to get out of your comfort zone and try to find out something that you may not know anything about and kind of get in that organization because you can always learn so much and meet so many great people. Because that's one of the best parts about FSU is like the people that are here and just like using your connections to find other opportunities to like really get the most out of your college experience. So yeah, definitely take advantage of No Central, which is the platform Irene was talking about to look at all the RSOs and also the involvement fairs is a great opportunity. Happens every semester, um, tables are set up so organizations can come out and like tell you about the organization, what they do, 
and you can get a feel for these people face to face. So you can kind of see like if you would want to fit in with them or not. So it's a great opportunity to find out what's out there and just get involved on campus. I'm not sure if anyone mentioned Market Wednesday as well. Every Wednesday, all the RSOs, we come out and we um, have tables. So like every Wednesday, you can come to Market Wednesday and learn about any RSO you want to be a part of because we come every Wednesday. Absolutely. Yeah, I just, I mean, echoing what everyone else already said, um, but I think just going in with a mind, like an open mind and just being willing to learn about different things because it is very different from just like clubs in high school. Like it's very different. So I think going in and just learning for yourself about what you want to do um, is just a good mindset to have. Definitely. Um, the next question is going to be, what is something you wish you knew before coming to FSU? <laughs> okay, I can start. Um, first thing, as soon as I heard that question, Google Calendar will save your life. Um, <laughs> something that I had no idea, like I didn't really, Back in high school, you kind of got away with, so I, I was an athlete in high school and also was involved, but I kind of got away with school. Right after school, we had, you know, those club meetings. And then after I had practice and that was pretty much my schedule. And I didn't really need Google Calendar, uh, but college is completely different. Um, Google Calendar, having it on your phone, the notifications uh, 30 minutes before to kind of give you an update or a reminder uh, is super important. Um, so that's the first one. Um, you will miss your family. So call your mom at least once a week. Cause if you think you miss her, like she's probably missing you a hundred times more. Um, so definitely reach out and make sure to like, let her know that you're thinking about her. Um, and this is the last one that I think is really important. Cause I know a lot of kids tend to come to Florida state and be like, Oh, like, I don't really have to go to class. Like, especially if it's an HCB, it's like a big class. Like I don't really learn. If you calculate how much each class costs, that'll make you less likely to skip class. So, um, Definitely keep that in mind. Try to go to class in person, ask your professors questions, raise your hand, don't be afraid to ask questions and just try to learn from either the person next to you or the professor. Um, so that's some things that I wish I would have knew. Yeah, this isn't anything specific, but like, I think we're all feeling this right now. Um, just appreciate like every single moment you have, like either whether you're going crazy studying or you're having the best weekend of your life, regardless of what it is, FSU definitely, it has a culture here that is, you know, focused about academic achievement, but it's also like the best four years of some of the best four years of your life. Right. But appreciate that. I think a lot of seniors recognize that um, all of us are going into our senior year. I think we're recognizing right that we don't know exactly how it's going to look, um, but we're looking back and like, man, like I wish I kind of like, appreciated that a little more. So for all you guys coming in, um, you have four years that are going to be amazing. So really just expand to that, finish your homework early so that you don't really have to say no, but be, be responsible with that too. Yeah, one thing um, that I wish I knew before I came to FSU is that it is way easier to start off with good grades than it is to catch up playing good grades. Because like, if you start off with, if you're not paying attention in class, you start off with a low GPA, the, the buildup is real, like that's tough. Like you wanna come into FSU, slay the easy classes now because when you first come into FSU, those classes are, are cake. And then like when there's a class that you're really struggling with, for my business major financial accounting, then you guys will um, have a buffer so that you guys can not worry much about your grades and more worry about the overall experience. I would also kind of echo some uh, moments that I heard that a lot of seniors um, kind of said about FSU is that FSU offers so much resources on campus, like the counseling center, and these things are paid in your tuition. So take advantage of these moments. And also, uh, FSU hosts a lot of things like the Global Cafe, and FSU also has like a meditation room. If you guys didn't know that, it's um, but they have a meditation room. There's so many resources on campus that you guys pay for. Definitely go ahead and use them. Um, while you can, because um, especially the career center as, as well, because those things can kind of give you the a boost in your career. Yeah, that was exactly what I was just going to say about the career center, um, because you will never have access to something like that ever again. And it is, like Josh said, it's already paid for, so you have no excuse not to. Um, but I think also, to, um, to echo what Kevin said, I know that like it's very tempting to skip class like as you get more involved in things but truly like 
you don't need to. And if like, you just have to go in with a mindset of like prioritizing school above like anything when you first come to FSU. Um, and then I think that changes your mindset of like wanting to skip class because there's been so many times where I've like not wanted to go and I've gone and people haven't been to that class that day for whatever reason. And then the teacher gets extra credit just for, because you went to class. Like there's just so many things like that. Or like, they'll be like, hey, just letting you all know we're gonna have like a pop quiz next week. I'll letting you know because you're here. Like teachers know that people skip class and they're very nice to the people. They notice who shows up. That's sort of way of saying it. They notice who shows up and it does play in your favor if you need a rec letter later on or whatever it is. So don't skip class. If there's one uh, piece of advice I could give to a freshman about like something that I wish I knew before coming to FSU is just take your academics seriously. Because FSU, it's, a, it's one of the top 25 public institutions in the country. It's not easy to get here. So everybody that's admitted is smart. Like you're very intelligent. And I know like, like me, probably a lot of you in high school didn't study a lot. Like I was one of those kids, like I had a test coming up, I was gonna study the night before and do, and do fine and graduate with like over 4.0 in high school. You cannot do that same thing in college. It won't work. I tried it freshman year, uh, learned the hard way and I had to adjust. So take it seriously. Definitely take time out of your day to study, hit the libraries, go to class. Uh, it will pay off in the end. And one more thing, uh, Irene, before you go on to the next question, I just had to emphasize, just enjoy every minute because it actually does go by flying. Like being on this call, I'm just like thinking right now, like it's crazy. I'm a freshman or a senior. Like I still remember being a freshman like it was yesterday. So I just had to emphasize, enjoy every second because it really does go by flying. Definitely. Um, so I know we've talked a lot about like skipping classes and stuff like that. And one of the things that freshmen fear coming in are the class sizes. So if there is any advice that you would give to them as far as succeeding in those big classes um, and what it feels like to be in those classes and the difference that it is between high school classes as well. Um, I guess I'll start off. Um, so FSU has a variety of classes. Like you can get really big classes, and you can get really small classes. My freshman year, I got put into a giant lecture with like 100, 200 kids, but then my next semester, I got into a class with 15 kids. So it really just depends on like your major and like what classes you sign up for. But to succeed, like what I would advise, something that I did when I was a freshman was, I always was, you don't have to be in the front row, but you should be at least in the front three rows because professors will remember you if you're always in the front. Like if the professor can see you and you're always like interacting with the class, the professors will remember you. And like, they'll notice when you're not there, even if it's like a big class. So if you really want to stand out, be in like the first three rows, when a teacher's asking questions, you'll notice that a lot of kids don't answer when a teacher will just ask the question. It's just this awkward silence. It'll happen every time. You can be like the one person just asks a question, no matter how dumb, like any question is a good question, just to get the teacher to recognize your face. And like, they'll even like get to know you. And that could probably help you later. All right, I'll go next. Um, I would say it definitely depends on how far you are in your collegiate career. Like when you're a freshman, you're probably taking a lot more general classes that everybody has to take. Like general bio, for example, like I took that my freshman year, it literally had over a thousand kids in it, right? Like that can be very intimidating, but the main thing that you have to do is stay focused. Um, definitely your main point of contact is probably going to be a TA, not even the professor, when classes are that big, like they have to have like multiple people to manage like all the students. So definitely keep in contact with your TA. Um, they usually provide feedback on the work, talk to them about it, see how you can do better. Definitely visit office hours because if they can like remember your face, remember your name, that will help you out in, in the end. Like if you maybe need like 1% to boost that B up to an A, they might be more inclined to help you out because they remember you actually trying, you came to office hours. Just try to separate yourselves from like the average student that'll help a lot. But um, as you get further on in your um, collegiate career, like your classes will definitely get smaller as you get like more down into like specific electives, like for your major, like the final like 4,000 level classes that you're taking, it'll get smaller. It'll be like more personal. You'll have like more interaction with the professor. Um, just try to like maintain those relationships with the professor and it'll work out to your benefit. Yeah, I think, um, well, number one, definitely go to office hours because they remember those people. And they'll harp on that. Like, that's the first thing a teacher will say to you when you ask them to bump your grade is like, I would have explained it to you in office hours. Um, but I also think in a big class, it's very, not even like the teacher noticing, but it's very easy to just go on Facebook on your computer or just like just get distracted because it's so big. And you know that there's a good chance if you're not in the front row, the teacher may not notice. Um, 
but that only is going to hurt you in the end. Um, I know there's like a lot of times where I've been sitting in a class and just, it's just so easy just to zone out and then you realize you missed something um, that you didn't necessarily have to. So I think just making sure that if you've carved out a time, like if you have a class time um, and you've committed to go to it, like don't just go and show up and then not do the class because then you're just wasting your own time. I agree. So for me, I've had classes ranging from 15 to 400. Um, I, I personally love small classes. I like having that interaction with the professor because um, not only you kind of get that connection and actually feel more inclined to ask questions. Cause I know sometimes people, even myself, like I just in big classes, I don't want to waste people's time and ask questions. I'd rather just like go up after and, and ask them personally. Um, but one thing with, you know, a class in HCB with 400 kids, um, try to not take notes on your laptop because at least for me, I did that at the beginning of freshman year and I was just reading up on business stuff and not anything that has to do with the class. Um, but if you have just a notebook out with your pen, you put your phone down and you don't, you just actually focus, you can actually write down and memorize it uh, as you go. And I feel like that's a lot more effective. So that's definitely a word of advice that I wish I would have done back then with the classes. Yeah, Kevin, I was going to say the exact same thing you did. You'll, you'll see a lot of students like watching Netflix or doing whatever, but it's so easy because your computer is like right there open in front of you. And I've been there, uh, especially with a class that you don't really want to take, but like guess what you have to right um so having that notepad and that physical like writing down the notes will probably like keep you up because i know that was one of my hardest things because i'll have like pt at 5 a.m and then i have class throughout the entire day i'm exhausted and i'm like trying to fall like i'm falling asleep right which is not what you want to do so a lot another tip is um make sure you get that coffee or whatever you do to keep you up um and just make sure you're like tr truly being engaged but writing down notes that was always the way i stayed up and um you know, paid attention. Yeah, I just want to kind of uh, echo what everybody said. It was about like sitting in the front, going to office hours, um, making sure that you use your notes to write instead of your laptop. Um, I find that also one thing that also to kind of like, I say, if you want to kind of be that rock star student, um, something that I always do is like, I like to send a thank you note at, towards the end of the semester to my professors. So oftentimes I do that and then um, maybe, you know, if you're on like an 89.4, that professor can possibly bump that grade up to a, a 90 or something like that. So having a thank you letter actually goes a long way because a lot of people kind of do things in email and stuff like that. So um, having a thank you letter just sets you apart. Thank you for that. Um, we have one question that I feel is kind of good for all of us to weigh in on. Um, and the question is from Dylan and he asks, it's a debate between him and his dad, and he wants to know, is it worth it to bring a car freshman year? I can, oh, I, <laughs> anyway, I, I didn't have a car freshman year and I was truly fine, but I will own that I'm saying this as someone who had friends with cars and that's why it was fine. Um, so I think it's beneficial, like it can be, I think parking sometimes is not always the best on campus. Um, especially if you're living in a residence hall, like that is something to consider. Um, I genuinely think as someone who did not have a car, it's very manageable to not have a car and to be able to get around most things you can walk to. Um, like there's a gen like college town right off campus, um, on campus. You don't, if you live on campus, you don't need to drive. Um, if you haven't, if you're living off campus and that's something that you just need to consider with like looking into bus schedules and all of that. Um, but overall, if you're living on campus as a freshman, I don't think you need a car. Yeah. The business aspect of it is like, why, like, why do you need it? Right. Do you plan on going home? Do you have to go to work? Um, like, you know, like Jetta just said, if you were just going to be on campus, you're living on campus, probably not. Um, but also a lot of students have scooters. Um, it's, you know, kind of like a funny college thing I guess I have a scooter I have one um right so you kind of get around or you can walk and I know my freshman year I walk like seven miles a day um just class dorm class dorm um you kind of get used to it but if you do plan on going home um you know and you live kind of far away that maybe the bus doesn't get there then uh maybe it is realistic or to have one um uh, but know that parking is hard sometimes um but also I know I saw in the chat also people having a conversation between Greyhound Red Coach I'm not going to endorse any company, but like when I went home, I used the red coach and it was fine. So um, that's also a recommendation, but there's 
Um, the scooters off campus, we have a pretty good, we have a very good bus system on campus. Um, there's definitely different ways. There's no, you don't have to, but I did, and I use it to go to the movies, a grocery store, whatever, but not on campus. Yeah, so uh, I'll also um, chime in here. So like me personally, um, I was a walker. Uh, my parents did not give me a car at all. Some people in this chat know some of my walking stories. It's actually pretty <laughs> hilarious. But <laughs> those who walk, sometimes you walk alone. Um, but um, when you're a freshman, <laughs> if you're living on campus, then like a car is really not a necessity if you're living on campus. Um, in fact, you'll probably make some of your best friends because they're going to be walking with you. And <laughs> uh, a car is not, ne is not necessary. And plus, parking, like parking is real at this school like parking is a jungle out here like even people who think they have a park don't have a park but the play devil's advocate um sometimes having a car is important if you're living off campus um if you have like if you have to go if you live on one side of campus such as like sally hall roger mccullum and then you have a class that's on the other side of campus maybe a car might be beneficial just playing devil's advocate but like as an avid three-time three-year walker um, you can definitely get by without a car, but like sometimes that car, you might need it sometimes. Um, All right, I'll go. Yeah, go, Jonathan. <laughs> I'll, Christian, I'll go after you. Yeah, I'll say that it's kind of down to personal preference. You know, it varies based on person to person, like what exactly your life looks like. Um, things to consider, like, do you have a job? Do you need to get to that job like by a certain time or a bus might not be the most reliable option? Then you might want a car. But if you don't really have like any sort of obligation where you have to leave campus, um, you probably don't need a car as a freshman. I lived on campus my freshman year and I had a car. But I, if I wasn't from Tallahassee, I probably wouldn't have a car like on campus because um, like because of parking, like a car can be more of a burden sometimes. Like literally like having to park and then go to class where you could just literally like walk from your, your dorm to class where you won't have to worry about any like timing or scheduling. Um, and having to move your car at certain times because you can't park at certain places at certain times. It can just uh, become a lot, be pretty tedious at times. So um, just kind of consider like what you have going on to see if a car is the best option because um, everything you need is pretty much within a close proximity to campus that you could walk to, take a scooter, a bike, or even get a ride from a friend that has a car. So just um, consider what you have going on and see if it would be the best option for you. Definitely. Um, to kind of piggyback, I feel like um, one of the things that I appreciate about FSU is that we're kind of centrally located to a lot of like grocery stores. Um, and we have a very awesome bus system that literally takes you to a lot of those grocery stores as well. Um, and kind of what everybody else said, you'll meet people along the way who kind of have a car already as well. Um, but then again, like they said, if you have, if you're planning on working a job, then I would I mean, say a car might be um, beneficial, but if you're as a freshman living on campus, because I'm going into my third year and I haven't had a car, and I would say I did pretty good. Um, so if you're a freshman and you're living on campus, I don't think that a car is necessary. Uh, all right, so I guess I'm last. I agree. So I freshman year didn't have a car. Um, I kind of, you know, I lived on campus in a dorm and I kind of liked walking to class because like we talked about before, our campus is beautiful. I love to just walk around and actually, you know, explore different parts of campus. So I think that was something that um, kind of incentivized me to keep walking, but definitely parking is the biggest issue ever on this campus probably. So definitely if you don't necessarily need a car for work or if you live off campus, then definitely don't have a car freshman year, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be our last question for the night. Um, so as an ambassador for the Student Alumni Association, one of the things we pride ourselves on is fostering the FSU tradition on our campus. Um, so I know a lot of you are either seniors, juniors, um, and a lot of you are involved on campus. So I would like to know, um, what is your favorite FSU tradition to date? I'll say being thrown in the fountain probably when you turn 21. I'll say that's one of my best traditions. I'll say, I guess it's the FSU tradition is just being thrown in the fountain. I like being thrown in the fountain. What month is your birthday in? <laughs> oh, August. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine's in December. So. Yeah, mine's in January. It was not a great day. <laughs> <laughs> mine's in January. <laughs> 
I'll say my favorite tradition is definitely the war chant in the football stadium, to be more specific. I don't know. It's just something about the aura of, like, everybody in the tomahawk shop in the war chant at the same time. It's just – it's a thrill that you can't get anywhere else. Like, no other school has something like that. It's one of the best parts about FSU by far. Like, it makes it very unique. And um, just, be, like, seeing all the students come together and being able to do that, it's just – and intimidating the other team, you know, it's just super cool. My favorite part. Yeah, so my I'll go next because uh, I agree with Christian. That's definitely my favorite, um, whether it's the basketball stadium or the football field. Um, it's just it, like that. You know how I talked about before with that, that vibe that you just feel when you come to Florida State? It's just like a different vibe when you're on, you know, you're in there with your students, like with your friends at the game. It's, you can't really put it into words, honestly, but uh, definitely the war chant. Yeah, I would say for me, it's kind of more like big picture, but like homecoming. I love homecoming. It's literally like the entire week is just festivities and all related back to FSU. You kind of, during that time of the season, especially if you're an involved student, it's just so stressful because it's like probably towards the uh, middle of the semester, you also got midterms. And then finally, like you're seeing alumni come back from like years and years and years. You're seeing their love for Florida State. You're having all these events. You have like, of course, you end it with like the football game where you know, you see uh, Chief Osceola and Renegade run out there. They throw the spear down. Um, you have, like, formal dinners. You have – I mean, it's just just awesome, right? So, I think that entire week just makes you relive why you love Florida State so much. Um, and that's exactly what it did for me. Um, I guess my favorite tradition um, is the parade. I love the parade. Like, the parade is, like <laughs> – it was part of the reason why um, I became president of SA, why I joined SA. It was because that parade, it's something different. Like, this just is so active and lively. <clears throat> all the parade, like, all the floats and just all the people and the excitement for homecoming, like, that really, like, keeps me going. That parade is really something that you should go to. Yeah, I didn't want to say the same thing, but – there is something about the war chant at the football game. Um, I also am a huge basketball person though. So I don't think it's a tradition may not be like the word, but I think that's one of my favorite things about FSU. Um, like there's just a camaraderie at those games. And I think that goes for like every game at FSU or just like big event. Um, there's just like a huge, to steal Kevin's word, vibe that you can't explain. Um, so I think that there's just something really special about those experiences. Irene, I think you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I would like to say thank you to our panelists. Um, unfortunately, um, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to email them to the SAA email. And I'm going to hand it over to Kenneth to finish us out for the day. Mm -hmm. All right. So thank you, Irene, for moderating the discussion tonight. And thank you to our amazing panelists for taking the time to be with us today. We greatly appreciate you sharing your experiences and knowledge with us. As you may have noticed, we didn't address any questions specifically about the plan for the fall semester. The university has put together a drafted plan and is presenting it at the appropriate governing bodies for approval. You can find the plan at the link in the chat if someone can drop it, um, the link to the um, plan. And if you enjoyed the event, make sure you join the Student Alumni Association in order to attend the rest of our summer webinars. You can become a member on our website that is in the chat box. If your parents have questions, we are hosting another panel to help answer questions that your parents may have. And also, um, as was previously said before, because some last minute questions put in, um, we're gonna have the email dropped for any questions that you may have, and we'll make sure that the panelists get the appropriate questions and they'll get back to you in a timely manner. Be sure to keep an eye out on social media for our future events during the summer. You can follow us on Instagram at FSU underscore SAA. Again, that's FSU underscore SAA. Stay safe and go Knowles.